Crystal, Nicole Flores, and my counterpart, Mike Daniel. And from the Central, uh, from the Catholic High School League, outside of Detroit, we have, uh, of course, the commissioner or the director, Dick Michaels. His group is Mike Agoy and Davis Feldman from the UB Jesuit, uh, came up today as their uh, AD. Uh, it's Nick Kosius, Garrett Sifton, the athletic director from Divine Child, and Judy Harris, the principal from St. Catherine of Siena. And also from St. John's, we have our president, Mike Sapona, with our uh, uh, assistant uh, vice president, Mr. Chris Knight, in the back over there. And we have one of our board members, Rick Ratty, who's also in the back over there. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Dick Michaels to do the honors. Thanks, Bob. Um, I'm very happy today to formally announce that five Toledo Catholic high schools have been accepted into the Detroit Catholic League, beginning with fall sports in the season of 2023-24 school year. These five schools, Toledo Central Catholic, Notre Dame Academy, St. Francis, the Sales School, St. John's Jesuit, and St. Ursula Academy, will be accepted as full members into the Catholic this announcement today follows months of discussion between the largest Catholic sports league in the country and these five schools, all located within the Diocese of Toledo. The schools each signaled their interest with letters to the Catholic League formally unanimously approved independently by our 18 <coughs> executive board members and each school. Beginning in the fall of 2023, Student athletes at the Toledo schools will be eligible to compete in CHSL championships in all 30 sports overseen by our league and will be given full league schedules in all sports that coincide with the MHSAA, as many sports in the OHSAA are conducted in different seasons. It won't be without many challenges, of course, because of that. But our athletic administrators at all 32 of our schools now have met multiple times and worked out most of the details that will allow scheduling to be as fluid as possible. We expect this change to benefit our existing 27 school members, some of which had to travel very long distances, farther than Toledo, in order to <coughs> fill their sports schedule. We're also glad to give the Toledo schools a new athletic home and grow our community of schools committed to Christ-centered athletics. On behalf of the Catholic League, our Archbishop Alan Vigneron and the Archdiocese of Detroit, I'm thrilled to welcome these great schools and dedicated student athletes into our school. I just want to ask you, what is the main reason you wanted to join up with some of these Toledo schools? What was the, the deciding factor for you guys? You know, I think everyone assumes that the biggest influence in this was football, right? That, that the schools in Toledo need football games. Our schools always need football games. But the truth is, it's equally difficult to find sub-varsity softball games or sub-varsity boys basketball games or freshman games. And one of the advantages of our league is we can accommodate the very best teams in our state and yours now, and also some of the worst teams in our state. We have an ability to uh, create schedules for both the good and the not so good teams. And some schools have the same thing happening in their Schools where they're very good in one sport, not very good in another, and we can create a competitive schedule for as many schools as possible. And the, and the Toledo schools really help fit our needs for that. Oh, Jeff, how important was it for not just one or two or three or four of the five Catholic schools here, but all of you guys coming together to all join in? Absolutely. I, I think people in the community are well aware of our rivalries 
and uh, maybe that's what people think of first, but I, I hope this is an opportunity for the community to see us uh, work really well together. It's, it's not the first time we've worked well together. Uh, the pandemic certainly created a lot of opportunity for all of us at this table to talk uh, openly and honestly, and in many ways, I think those are the kinds of things that make what we're doing today all the more possible, because while you can while you can speak of the rivalry or what separates us, far more important and far more vast is what unites us. As Vic said, you know, Christ-centered sports, um, that's great. And, and, and to have that invitation brought to us first by the Catholic League, and then for all of us to come together um, and, and, and to, you know, discern that, reflect on that, and really feel uh, that, that our contribution and joining this is, is valued, you know, beyond the idea of, uh, you know, <clears throat> strength of schedule or, or building out schedules, but to say, because this is true for any league, right? The more teams you have, the more opportunity uh, to, to match up better. So we're, I think we're all very excited for that. But I think it is important that all five of us um, are doing this together because much more than words, it speaks with our actions. You know, our being present today, you know, our rival school is hosting this event, and here we are. Why? Because this is what it's all about. I said this before to someone else that, you know, we have sports in a Catholic school, as every school does, because it teaches the life lessons in things that young men and young women find important, right, so they can learn these life lessons. And so we as adults, we have to model that. I think we're doing that very well today. For Augustine, Ursula, Mary Warren. Mary Warren. Just curious, I know I'm a parent, I know there's going to be some parents that come to the student athletes, they're going to say, oh man, Tuesday night I got to drive my kid up to sports somewhere around that area. Uh, but from what I've gathered in these kind of anecdotal conversations, is the travel is not as bad as you might presume. Could you speak to that and what you can hear about the travel? Sure. Um, as, as we all came together to evaluate this opportunity, we, we did look at um, the travel that would have been involved, whether we stayed in, independent or gone with the Catholic High School League. And we, like all these other schools, are committed to serving our student athletes and our parents, and we will work together uh, on the transportation issues. It will um, it will be an opportunity for us to um, determine what is the easiest cost cost uh, economically um, opportunity to get our student athletes to the game, and uh, also safety issues as we travel. But our our athletes have traveled all across the, the state anyway as it is, and this is just we're going a little in the opposite direction geographically. And, and thankfully, at least right now, I-75 is not on the <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I've done a map last week of each of our schools to some of your schools, and the longest is about an hour and 15 minutes, so and many of them are within an hour. For us, that type of travel, uh, that occurs with our traffic. It occurs uh, in shorter distances than even driving distance. Now, I'm back to the, you know, why we wanted to do this. About, had it been over 10 years ago, I, I met with uh, then superintendent of schools down here, uh, Mr. Knight, who, who's here today, uh, and trying to get something, some dialogue started in, in hopes of uh, at least uh, sharing some sports with the community. You know why was it so important to follow up? You know, you, you know of the the success these Toledo teams have had. It just makes your league that much more competitive and more prestigious, right? Can you talk about why it was important to have the Toledo team? Yeah, um, I mean, some of it has to do with the success of the Toledo schools, but um, along with our success, but it's more and more difficult to find schools that uh, have the same thinking that we have, have the same values that we have, uh, the same beliefs that we have. Uh, so the more we can play schools like that, uh, the better off we are. You know, we see a lot of things happening in our in educational athletics that uh, aren't really approved of, and uh, we we don't like to think those things happen as frequently in in our schools. Although the behavior of our coaches typically does. So. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, we'll be around for a little bit. Um, I really want to thank the huge number of people that showed up today. 
to uh, Bob mentioned uh, the board members and and uh, school administrators that are here. It's great to see so many of you. I'd like to meet each of you. Um, I'm sure I will as we go forward. And uh, uh, I'll be around for a little bit to, to talk about this. Thing. So. Dick, if I may, I, I want to, and I, I think on behalf of all of us presidents, thank our ADs um, whose tireless work on this. This was the amount of hours that they put in. <laughs> Obviously, people will be around to talk and answer any more questions.